Hello, my name is Kiriath, and today we are going to paint some Vindicator. So, I did a uh, I did a little community post a little while ago talking about the fact that I managed to paint the other side of my Vindicator. Now, this side is the one that I did uh, when I was being taught how to do this technique by Byron live. Uh, we recorded the whole session and then put it up on the YouTube channel, and I feel like the result was pretty good for a first time. It also took like an hour for me to do that. Now that side I did in about 20 minutes by myself, because of course talking less means you get to paint more, and quite a few people asked how to do it. Now, that side looks okay, and the tutorial for it shows you exactly what to do. It is a bit on the long side, so I thought what I'd do is do a condensed version, and uh, we would replicate this that I did in about 20 minutes, actually a little bit less technically, uh, on that bit. So, this will hopefully show you how to achieve that sort of finish on this. Now the thing is, it doesn't matter what the surface is, the technique is all the same, the finish will be exactly the same no matter what surface you do it on. Be a bit more tricky for curved surfaces, but flat, it's pretty easy to replicate that onto here. I will say before we get started, if you are planning to do a whole tank like this, I would suggest you do it either in stages, or make sure you've got a good few hours and do it all in one go. You'll note that that side is a little bit different in hue to that side. That side's a bit a bit brighter, a bit more vibrant, and uh, that is because I've done these two sides separately. If you're going to do a whole tank this way, I would suggest you try your best to either do the whole thing in one go, or, alternatively, do one layer across the whole tank, then do a second layer when you have time to do a second layer, then do the third layer across the whole thing in one go. It'll be easier to keep it consistent that way. But we're going to try and replicate that on here in a nice, quick, easy, efficient manner so that you can see how I did it and you can do it yourselves. So let's get started. For this, I will be using, of course, of course I'll be using some Artis Opus Series D brushes because they are what I use 99.9% .9 of the time now, uh, even for like almost like detailed stuff I've taken to using these because you can get a nice finish with the extra small. So I'm going to be starting with the extra large. There is, of course, the large and the medium that will most likely be brought into use for this. I suspect we will only use the medium at the very end, but it is worth having. And uh, just to give you an idea as to how much I do use these brushes, uh, let me just get a brand new fresh one out. So this is a brand new fresh large, and this is the original large that I got when I was first sent these brushes to try out. As you can see, I've used it quite a bit. <laughs> There's the occasional question of, yeah, but okay, you talk about these, how often do you really use them? Uh, constantly, all the time. They are my go-to brush for the vast amount of painting I do, and it shows, because that has now, that has become worn down quite significantly compared to a brand new one. So I just thought I would show that to you quickly there. Let's go, let's get started. So, in order to achieve this sort of finish, what I'll be doing today is using five paints. I'm going to be using uh, Hex Lichen, I'm going to be using Warlord Purple, Pixie Pink, and Ice Yellow, my favourite paint in the whole world now. And as a base for all of this, I'll be using Huldra Blue. So, Huldra Blue is from, from Scale 75. Hex Lichen is from Game Color, as is Warlord Purple. Now, both of these can be substituted very easily for Games Workshop paints. You can get a Xerius Purple that will replace Hex Lichen if you want a Citadel paint. And uh, I believe Screamer Pink is a good substitute for Warlord Purple. Pixie Pink, I forget the name of the Citadel paint, but you can find a replacement for it in that range. Ice Yellow, I have yet to find something that is, that is the same from Citadel. So, those are the paints we're going to use for this. And with any luck, if this goes well, we should have this dozer blade in roughly the same style and hue as that in, given it's all one surface, I would hope about 10 minutes. That's what I'd hope for. That's what I'm going to aim for. Anyway, now I won't be covering the bottom of this because on this Vindicator, this and the sections around here will all be a different colour, most likely gold. So I'll only be doing this main section here. Which, of course, does cut the time down, but you can apply this technique to any surface, so really, it doesn't matter so much uh, exactly how much of it you're doing. So we're going to start by getting a bit of Huldra Blue, which is a fantastic colour, by the way. It's so... Oh, it's just so rich. It's a really nice, deep, dark blue. 
Going to take my extra large Artisopa Series D, dip it in the glass, put a bit of moisture on the dampening pad there. You want to make sure that it's it's not too damp, just enough that you can feel it on your finger. Dip the brush into there because we're going to be really, really going at it for this. Make sure that it's not soaking wet. You just want it a bit damp on your hand, so just test on the back of your hand. What I'll do. Then I'm going to get the brush at the edge into the paint, rotate it round, get a bit, get a decent sort of glob on there. Then I'm going to do a little bit of this on the texture palette. Now a texture palette is pretty important. It simulates having uh, like a rough surface. So when you're doing the really fine sort of dry brushing, you can go over the texture palette, get rid of the majority of the pigment and the paint, and then you can start going on your model. In this case, we want a decent, a decent coat of it. So this is closer to a, tr a traditional sort of base coat um, because it's it's fairly damp and there's a good amount of paint still on there. You want to go 90 degrees to the actual surface, so I'm just going to really slap that on there. Oh, a little bit tricky to hold on to this actually. I didn't realise just how much of a pain that was. Okay, so I'm really going at it. I'm just poking away. Poke, 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 poke. I want to make sure that I've got pretty much the entire surface. Now with the extra large brush you do tend to lose a couple of bristles here and there, but that's fine. You can pick them off, or if you want a kind of scratched finish. Genuinely, I found for a couple of vehicles, if I've left the uh, the um, the bristles that have shed on the surface and then taken them off afterwards, there's quite a cool scratch effect to it. But that's entirely something you should only do if you really want to. So we go back to the dampening pad to sort of reactivate the pigment that's on the brush rather than going and getting more paint, because you don't need that. There's plenty still on here. I'm doing a little bit of a uh, flick just to get rid of some of the worst of the shedding shedding hairs off the brush and just really going at it. I want a nice, a nice decent base coat there. Oops, excuse me. Get rid of that. That one's a bit stuck in. I'll get rid of that in a second. Just going to reactivate that again. I'm going to get just a tiny bit more paint because I want a really deep, rich base colour for this. And then really go at it like so. And that should be pretty decent. I'm trying to make sure I get in all the corners. I apologise if I'm breathing a bit heavily and keep sniffing, by the way. My hay fever has really, really ramped up in the last couple of days. It's awful. Been doing a lot of work in the garden, which is nice because we've got loads of flowers, but also means that I can't breathe 90% of the time. Okay, there we go. And... Uh, I'm just going to leave that there. That's fine. Okay, so we've got a decent, a decent kind of uh, stippled coat there. You're more stippling than dry brushing to start off with. I'm just going to try and get rid of a bit of the excess on the damp on the uh, texture palette. So, as you can see, I'm just really going at the palette with the brush. Now it's obviously still pretty dark. You can go on the back of your hand. So it's stained, but there's not really a huge amount of pigment coming through, which is what we want. Now we're going to move on to this hex lichen. So give the hex lichen a shake. And again, this is a, this is a Vallejo, a Vallejo paint. Going to do a line out. Oh, I splurged that a little bit. That's fine. It doesn't matter if there's a bit more than we need because we're going to need it again a bit later. Dip it in there. Now we're going to get the Huldra Blue on that section of the brush like so. Then I'm going to get the Warlord Purple on another section of the brush. And just underneath where we were doing it before, mix it together on the texture palette. I want to create a nice, deep, rich purple. Make sure I get a bit of the excess off like that. And then I'm just going to go for it. And again, it doesn't matter that it's a bit it's a bit damp this time around because we just want a nice, a nice good coverage all over the front of the dozer blade. Really, really go at it creates a really nice sort of dark rich purple which I hope is coming through on the camera okay really smack it away at it of course it doesn't matter if you go over the edges because that's all stuff that you will you will end up painting over anyway okay that's pretty decent that's actually in quite a nice coat straight off the bat actually I'm just gonna dampen the brush and give it one more going over and again we're still just stippling here just really going at it good start. Now I've stippled it really roughly because you want a bit of texture. You want a bit of texture on there so that the rest of the paint kind of brings itself out. So that's how you get that kind of mottled finish on uh, on the lighter colours by making sure there's a decent amount of texture actually on the thing. 
you're not actually putting a huge amount of paint on. That's the thing. It's far less paint than if you do a single coat, or if you do like two thin coats or three thin coats. It's still not very much. You just get good coverage, and it builds just that little bit of texture onto it. So that's nearly, nearly dry. I'll give that a good a good blow for a second and that should be of course the easiest way to test it is just to poke it if you've got nothing coming off then you're good so we're good now we're just going to do pure warlord purple not warlord purple hex lichen i keep jumping ahead of stage because uh unfortunately this is one of my favorite colors it's so good for emperor's children it's i mean it's purple but it's also very very pink we're gonna uh, we're gonna wait a sec before we go on to that we're going to start, we're going to do hex lichen over the top of this, not filling out the entire thing this time. Uh, and then after that, we're going to mix it with the Warlord Purple. So we've still got a bit of uh, bit of hex lichen on the palette just there. You can, you can see it just here. So we will get a bit of that on the edge of the brush. Again, we will turn it round on the palette, get the end nice and uh, nice and covered. And then we're going to repeat the same, the same process again. Now I've got a bit more of the excess paint off this time before we start because we don't want this to be quite as quite as rich we don't want it to cover quite as much so now that we've got a decent amount on we're just going to very roughly stipple it on there but we don't want to go all the way to the edges we want to maintain some of that darker purple at the very edge and give that a nice nice going at now you will find at this point that you're probably going to have to dampen the brush a bit more. There we go. And then, uh, yeah, so we're just going to work our way up and round into that side. If you can rest it on something, that'd be better. I did the silly thing. I I glued these on before I painted it. Really, I should have waited until after. It would have made it far easier, but it's fine. You can work around it. So we're not being anywhere near as consistent in terms of trying to get around the edges or anything like that. We're just sort of following the uh, following the line of the gap and we'll just do one more just to properly layer it up so you can see that we've got that we've got a very distinct line going up and across there we'll just do a little bit down there and then we're done we are going to take some of the the warlord purple that i have on my brain so I keep i keep <laughs> saying we're going to use and then we don't so I give that a good shake and then we're going to put that across there like so again just another nice little neat line okay gonna get a bit more moisture on the dampening pad so again dip the end of the brush in then put it in there then give it a swirl make sure that it's not too too wet now i'm going to take that out of the way because i'm done with it i'm going to take that out of the way because i'm done with it so all we have left currently we need to use the warlord purple the pixie pink and the ice yellow so we've got the warlord purple already on the palette there that's pretty much good to go. It doesn't matter that it's still a little bit damp. Going to get a decent amount of Warlord Purple, but we're going to get a bit, um, a decent amount of Hex Lichen and get even more Warlord Purple on there. I've got it on the brain. I can't, <laughs> I can't, uh, can't stop referring to it even when I'm not using it. So as you can see, that's giving a much lighter, a much lighter purple. Get rid of most of that on the texture palette, and then. Go at it again, same angle. So we just want to get a nice, decent coverage over that section we've already we've already done. Thing is, if you think it's too light by this point, you can easily go back and make a a lighter mixture. Although having dampened the brush, that is that's a bit closer to it, which I think actually will do. Probably do. I might do a little bit more. I might do just a tiny bit of uh, hex lichen and then do a really decent amount of uh, wool or purple and then I'm going to go over the same spot again because that'll, that'll just pick it up slightly so we've got a really nice really nice sort of not massively bright but decent sort of uh, color there and then we we'll go over the top again just still stippling that's all you need to do just keep stippling it we're not going into the corners still. And that'll do for there. Okay, so again, clean the brush off on the texture palette. Just give it a good scrub. Okay, that's getting there. I'm, I keep giving it a quick blow, but I don't want to blow down the uh, microphone because that sounds terrible. So we're going to do a bit more Warlord Purple here. 
Looks like I've been given the most horrendous bruise on that <laughs> on that hand. That's the only downside of this. You like you've been you've been through the wars. So a bit of Warlord Purple. And again, a bit of Army Painter. Oh, Pixie Pink, which is on the floor, but it's fine. We've got it. I should probably redo that and do like a second take, but it's fine. Everyone drops stuff. It happens. You're not alone if you dumped paint all over the floor. We've all done it. <laughs> repeatedly, even though we swore we would never do it again because it's devastating and it stains the carpet. Okay, so need to get a bit more, bit more in the dampening palette there. Make sure that it's not. In fact, I'm going to flip the uh, the pad over. There we go. That's nice. Test that on there. Okay, so this time we're going to get Warlord Purple and Pixie Pink. Get a nice solid chunk of pixie pink on the end of the brush and then again we're just going to properly lay it out get rid of as much of the excess as we can and then we're going to do exactly the same process again so we're just going to stipple it on nice and rough all across the front of this up to there it's a little bit tricky for me to see what i'm doing because the camera's right over where i want to look but it's fine so get that all the way across there. Maybe fill out that top section a little bit. Okay, I think at this point we want to move on to a smaller brush. The extra large has served us pretty well for getting a nice amount of coverage there. There's a bit of a gap there because it wasn't fully dry before I started, but that's okay. We can sort that. Now, if you're not recording a video, what you want to do is properly clean the end of that. Give it a good old scrubbing on the... Uh, on the texture palette make sure that you've got as much of the paint out as you possibly can because i'm recording what i'm going to do instead is i'm going to simply switch over to another brush come back to this later and give it a good wash with some actual brush cleaner so you don't have to do that i will point out that this brush since i've had it has never had a proper clean it's only ever been cleaned on texture palettes and models and whilst it does have a bit of staining in the uh, bristles it's pretty much as though there's nothing on there at all uh, but you do want to do want to take care of them um, but in this instance I'm just gonna leave this because that takes a little while to do and uh, I want to I want to keep I want to keep going I want to get cracking so as you can see we've got a little bit of a gap there that's not too bad because we are now going to have a go at that with the large brush and just some pure pixie pink but we want a much lighter coat of that so I'm gonna dip the brush in the uh, in the dampening pad. Okay, so we're just gonna get some pure pixie pink on the end of the brush here. Just about that much. We're gonna go up here and we wanna get most of it off there. So there we go. So we've got just a touch on the end and then we're gonna, again, we're gonna start out by, uh, gonna start out by stippling this is a this is a new a very new brush so it does shed a little bit more. Um, I'm gonna start out by stippling which is a bit more on there. The pixie pink is a lot lighter in pigment, like it just doesn't have as much pigment pigment as the darker paints. So you sometimes do just need to put a bit more on there to start with. Once you've got a decent amount in, you can reactivate it using the dampening pad, and then we'll just go along that section again there we go we're getting there nicely going to reactivate it one more time and then go back the way we came because i don't want it all the way to the edges i want to maintain that stimulus style that we had to the uh to the sides of the tank which that is doing pretty well at emulating and i'm just going to try and fill that little section in a little bit that needs to dry so that is because at some point what I've done was too damp and it's not dried properly. I'm going to take the opportunity whilst that dries to just take a couple of the uh, hairs off the out of the uh, out of the paint. Okay now that section's dried a little bit more I'm just going to get a tiny bit more on the brush and just going to try and gently stipple and fill that in. Which we've done straight away. Got a little bit of hair on there, but we can take that off easily enough. And there we go. So, 
we've got all of that done. Next up is just going over it with, actually, let's get a little bit more down there. So re, re, re dampen the brush a little bit, get a little bit down there like that. I just want to extend the color down slightly. And at this point, now that we've stippled a good amount on, what we're going to do is we're going to do actually some sort of more traditional dry brushing. We're just going to go back and forth right into the edges just because it brings them up slightly. It doesn't look like you're doing much, but you are. You're kind of layering the uh, the top layer of the color into the very edges, which brings the dark purple and the blue that you had in there before. It just lightens it that little bit and it kind of brings it all kind of into a more uniform sort of state. Okay, so now we've done that. There we go. Perfect. Now to finish off, because we are now finishing off, uh, it was that quick, I'm going to switch to my old, um, my old large, and I'm going to do a bit of ice yellow over the top. You don't need to switch out to an old large. I would probably, if I was doing this without recording, I would just give that brush a thorough, like a thorough scrubbing on the, uh, on the texture palette, but we're recording, so I want to be as quick as possible. I'm already losing a bunch of time by actually just talking instead of doing it. I mean, as you can see, the surface of this is way simpler and way easier than doing multiple sections of that. Um, it's, it's literally just talking about it as you do it slows you down massively for whatever reason. I put it down to uh, an, in a, an incapability of multitasking. So get a bit more on the texture palette, on the uh, dampening pad even. Test the brush out, that's good. Gonna get a tiny, tiny amount of ice yellow on the very edge. Now this is a dangerous paint. It's a really good paint, it's brilliant. But no matter how much I use it, it is unpredictable at times. So I wanna make sure that there's barely anything on there. Now it looks like there's nothing on there, but sometimes you think there's nothing on there and it still ends up taking you by surprise. This time, however, it hasn't. I've completely wiped off the brush, which again, happens occasionally, but you just gotta be so careful because you're at the end stage now. Everything's fixable, but you don't wanna mess it up on the last layer because that's just irritating. So, okay, got hopefully a bit on the brush there without it being too conspicuous. Yes, there we go. So you can see that little bit on there. That's what we want. We wanna stipple that on and do occasional like side to side motions. We wanna get a bit on and then sort of soften it in like that. So I'm gonna get a bit of moisture on the brush which will most likely bring it out more. Yep, there we go. This is the, this is the terrifying bit because you don't wanna mess it up at this stage. And I'm just gonna stipple and then sort of circular motion. And again, I want to stipple and circular motion because I'm, I just want to blend it in a bit into the edges a bit more and keep going with that. Going to get a bit more moisture on the brush because I don't want to overdo it. There we go. That's a bit much there, but we've managed to salvage it. It's fine. That is a bit much actually. Let's, let's bring that up and bring that down down at the same time and then I'm just gonna really roughly go across like that there's a bit of a join there which we can get rid of with a bit more stippling okay let me just do a quick a quick spot check on this one we are pretty close we're pretty close we're getting there we're getting there. That right side is a little rough. It's a little faded out. Could do with a bit of a sort of focal point. So I'm going to get a tiny bit more on the brush. Make sure it's not completely overpowering. And then just go at it again in a hopefully reasonable way. Yeah, we've still got... There we go. That's looking a bit better. And then just keep going at it. Keep going at it, keep going at it. You can probably hear the impact of it, but. And then get a little bit more moisture on the brush. And then really fill out that sort of center line. Don't 
don't be afraid to give it a rub with your finger if you're not happy. And you know what? That's pretty much it. So, there we go. A bit longer than I wanted it to take, but I was talking at the same time. Basically, exactly the same effect, but spread over a wider area on the front of the dozer blade as we've got on that side. That is a lot more consistent with... Um, with one side than the other. This side needs going over again at some point, but that's fine. So yeah, there you go. It's about, I mean, I'll have to go back through the recording. I think that was about 20 minutes again, actually. There was a bit more faffing around than I really wanted to do, but it's so much harder to do this when you're talking as well as doing it. When you're doing it just normally, you don't really sort of go through things step by step. It's a lot quicker and more instinctual. But yeah, that is... But it's pretty much exactly the same finish on that as that. Maybe a bit more a bit more bright white, but we could either bring up the main tank to match, or we could subdue that a little bit with a bit more of the pixie pink over the top. Either way, that is how you do that. Lots of stippling, lots and lots of stippling, primarily stippling, a bit of dry brushing towards the end, but you're just basically trying to build up texture and then layering the colours over the top of that texture. So there you go. That is how I did that on my Vindicator. You now know how to do it yourself. It is, of course, very reliant on the brushes you use and the technique you use. Um, you guys already, by this point, know that I use the Artist Opus stuff for all the painting I do now. Um, but there's, the, yeah, the, <laughs> I'm trying to think of anything that I do that I don't use Artist Opus for. Basing. I don't use them for basing, but only because I use my oldest, most knackered, cheap brushes for basing. Uh, so, really, and even then, Thinking about it, I still use Artis Opus for some of the basing because for the dry brushing on this guy, for instance, uh, this guy's base, I used Artis Opus stuff for that. So even then, even then, um, yeah, I use them pretty much everything. But that's why, because I like the I like the finish they get, I like the result they get. They're very fun to use. They're fun to experiment with, and you can do all sorts of different kind of uh, kind of color combinations and techniques with them. Um, in fact, oh, let me just grab this chunky boy off here. Uh, a good example is like the legs off this knight. Again, was done using the Artis Opus stuff. Uh, and of course, the model I showed you just there, my uh, my Chaos Lord, again, was all done using Artis Opus stuff as well. So yeah, that is how I do my Vindicator. That is how you do that particular technique and that particular look. I hope you found that interesting and helpful. And uh, I hope you give it a go yourselves, because it is a fun way to paint, and you can get some really nice results out of it. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, feel free to click all the things, Patreon, video, subscribe, all that stuff. Click it if you like, don't click it if you don't want to. And uh, as always, there's an affiliate link for Element Games in the description, and I will contain some artist open stuff in that link as well if you want to take a look. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.